All right, folks, so we have these two functions, f of x and g of x. And our challenge is that we have to find their derivatives. So looking at f of x and g of x, you might notice that they're pretty similar. And the only difference between f of x and g of x is where this exponent is placed. So in f of x, the exponent ln of x is not inside of this argument of the bottom ln of x, so it's not inside these two parentheses, whereas in g of x, the exponent ln of x is with inside the parentheses. And that's the only difference. And so you so so trust me on this, they're not the same thing. Okay. So the goal is we want to find these derivatives. So looking at f of x, let's go through our tool tool belt of differentiation and let's see which tools we can use. So what's wrong with just using the power rule? So in in the same way that like x cubed gets differentiated into 3 times x squared. Why can't we just use that with f of x and bring ln of x down in front and then decrement the exponent by 1? What's wrong with that? Um, the answer is that we this f of x is an x raised to a constant. That's the only situation in which you can use the, the power rule. Okay, so we can't use power rule. What about using the property of logarithms where you take the exponent of the logarithm and bring it down in front? And then it would just become ln of x times ln of x. And then we could do product rule or we could combine it and do chain rule or something. The problem with that is it can only be used in one of these two cases. So can in which case, f of x or g of x, are you allowed to bring the exponent down in front using the property of logarithms? Um, and, and that's the important part. That's why I have f of x and also g of x. And the answer is you can only use that property of logarithms where you bring the exponent down in front when the exponent is within the parentheses of the logarithm. So you can only use that for g of x. So let's go ahead and do that. So g of x, we'll use that property of logarithms to solve for the derivative of g of x. So we can bring this exponent ln of x down in front, right? You always see it with like a little arrow like that. So we're gonna bring it down in front. So we get ln of x times ln of x. And what does this equal? This is ln of x, the whole thing squared. Um, so notice you can't bring this 2 down in front using the property of logarithms because it's outside of these parentheses. If it was ln of just x squared, then we could, but it's ln of x, whole thing squared, so we can't. But now we have some function of x raised to a constant, so we can apply the power rule and also the chain rule to get the derivative of g of x. So g prime of x would then be we do first the power rule, so 2 times ln of x raised to the 2 minus 1 power, so raised to the first power, but we have to multiply by the quote-unquote derivative of the inside, right? And so the derivative of the inside in this case is the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. And so this is the derivative of g of x right here. So g of x wasn't that bad to differentiate. So what? let's go back to f of x and see how we can tackle this knowing that we're not allowed to bring this ln of x down in front. So the answer is that whenever you have a function of x raised to another function of x and you want to take the derivative, the derivative of that whole thing, you have to use what's called logarithmic differentiation. And so what that entails is the first step, before you do any differentiation, you're going to want to take the natural log of both sides. And that's going to allow us to bring this exponent down and turn it into a product rule question. So let's go down here let me recopy f of x. Okay, so like I said, before you do any differentiating in logarithmic differentiation, you want to take the natural log of both sides. So that would look like this. Okay, and the reason we did that is because now we have this exponent ln of x within side, within the parentheses of a natural log. And so now we can actually take this natural log of x and bring it down in front. Okay, so that's, that would be the next step. And at this point, we know the derivative of the left and the derivative of the right, or at least we know how to do it. So that's the next step, is do d dx of both sides. So what's the derivative of the left side with respect to x? That would be the derivative of ln of f of x. And so you guys know that when you want to take the derivative of the natural log of a function, it is 1 over what's on the inside times the derivative of the inside. So this left side here, when we differentiate it with respect to x, we'll get 1 over f of x times the derivative of f of x. Okay, now what's d dx of the right side of this equation? So this is a product of two functions of x, 
And so we're going to apply the product rule. So the product rule says you take the left term and then you do the derivative of it, multiply it by the right term, leaving it alone, and then you add to that the opposite. So you add to it, um, you leave the left side alone and you do the derivative of the right side. So I'll do that really quick and then I'll come back. Okay, so I'm at this point in the product rule differentiation and I've done everything up until needing to take the derivative of this blue part here. So we want to take the derivative of the natural log of the natural log of x. And so if you remember from when we differentiated this left side, the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over that something times the derivative of that something or whatever is on the inside. So in this case, the derivative of ln of ln of x is 1 over the inside, 1 over ln of x times the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of ln of x? That's just 1 over x. So here we go. I've written out the derivative of this right side of the equation um, right here, and I've tried to color code it for you. But that's not the final answer, because remember, we're trying to find um, we're trying to find f prime of x. And what we just found was the derivative of this guy, which isn't the same thing as f prime of x. So we want to isolate this term right here. And this is the clever part, I think, of logarithmic differentiation is the last step is you multiply both sides by f of x and you, re and you actually know what f of x is, right? It's the original function, this guy. And then so the last step would be you replace f of x with, uh, in this case, ln of x to the ln of x. So that's the next step is, the next step is you isolate f prime of x so I'm just going to multiply both sides by f of x. Okay, so now all that's left is we do some simplification and we plug in for what f of x actually is. So looking in here, this ln of x cancels with this ln of x, and I can factor out a 1 over x. So we have our final answer, f prime of x equals f of x. If you look back at the very beginning, f of x is defined to be ln of x to the ln of x. So f of x here we have ln of x to the ln of x and let's factor out this uh, 1 over x so we'll divide this by x and this gets multiplied by whatever's left over after factoring out the 1 over x so that's this part right here ln of ln of x so ln of ln of x and then plus well, these ln of x is canceled and we factored out this 1 over x. So all that we're left with is a 1. This here, much more complicated than g prime of x, what we got before, is f prime of x. So I hope you're able to distinguish, first of all, the differences between this function f of x and this function g of x. And then I'm hopeful that you're able to understand the process of logarithmic differentiation to get f prime of x and then simple chain rule to get g prime of x. So this is like, these are some of my favorite derivatives, so I thought I should better make a video on it. Um, so I hope this is helpful, and I'll, I'll see you next time.